All right, welcome to lesson 5.11. We're going to continue writing exponential functions that are modeling continuous growth and decay, and we're going to work on using technology to solve exponential equations. All right, so we want to pick up where we left off here with the covered coffee cup. Uh, so go ahead and pause the video if you need to finish writing down the problem. Make sure you do so, and then go through uh, A, B, C, and D. In part A, you might want to remind yourself of the steps by which you can sketch uh, an exponential function. So you might want to go ahead and take a look at that lesson to refresh your memory. Then go ahead and go through these. We'll take a look, and from it we will learn a couple of techniques uh, for solving exponential equations. So let's start off by talking about how we can sketch this, this function pretty efficiently. Uh, this is an exponential decay function. So we understand that the um, exponential decay function looks like this. And we notice there are some transformations here. There is a transformation upward of 68. So where all our normal exponential decay function without any transformations is going to approach 0 or the x-axis, because we've translated uh, upwards 68 units, we know that the function is going to approach 68. So that allows us to draw our horizontal asymptote at 68 and then we can find a couple of points starting with the y-intercept and use that to sketch uh, the graph. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now and if you haven't done so you should do so as well. Alright so here is the function uh, f of t. I've plotted the y-intercept which is nice and easy. I can do that in my head. Uh, t is 0. The y-value is 180. I plotted a point at 10. Uh, when t is 10 after 10 minutes, the temperature is 118.3. And after 20 minutes, the temperature is 90.6. And I have my horizontal asymptote here, so I can see that the exponential decay function will be getting closer to, but never quite uh, touching 68. All right, so is the coffee cooling continuously, and at what rate? It certainly is, and the way I can tell that it's cooling continuously, just by looking at the function, is that we have a uh, continuous uh, decay function here. But also just from a standpoint of real life, it's pretty obvious uh, you have a cup of coffee at every instant it is cooling. Now it might not be cooling by a whole lot each instant but those little changes over time do add up. What is the rate at which it's cooling? Well it's cooling at a rate of 0.08 is the rate and so when we convert this to a percent we see that that's eight percent and we know that we're counting by minutes so our rate is going to be eight percent per minute all right so now we're going to take a look at why this function makes sense from a real life standpoint uh, we have a cup of coffee it starts off really really hot and it's going to cool down but it's not going to cool down um, you know, in a straight line, for example, uh, because that would mean eventually you know, it's going to just start freezing and then get really, really, really cold and you know, it's a negative temperature at some point. That's not how coffee cools, right? It's going to cool down, but it's never going to get colder than the temperature of the room. And in this case, the temperature of the room is 68 because we can see that the temperature of the coffee will never, ever actually be able to get colder than 68. It'll get infinitely close, but will never ever dip below the room temperature, which should make perfect sense. All right, now our goal is to find out how many minutes is the temperature of the coffee, uh, is it going to take for the temperature of the coffee to reach 140 degrees Fahrenheit? Give uh, your answer to three decimal places. All right, so there is a couple ways that we can tackle this. The first is we can say to ourselves, okay, let's look at the graph and let's try and estimate where the graph is going to have a y value of 140. Now, if we do that, and let's say we, we pick a point here, let's say this is 140, making a nice approximation here. So if I draw a straight line through 140, it appears to me that we have an intersection that occurs, I don't know, sometime right before five minutes. So I might estimate or approximate that the point at which f of t equals 140 is maybe 4.5. So that could be an approximation, and that's perfectly fine. But we want to get a little bit more um, precise. So let's think about what we just said. We're looking for when f of t, our function here, is equal to 140. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to set f of t equal to 140. This is what we want to solve. Okay, well, what does that look like? f of t is the function 112 e to the negative 0 0.08 t plus 68, and we are setting that equal to 140. Now, we have vast experience uh, solving equations using technology in that we have two functions here, our function f of t and the constant function 140. We can graph both of these functions. So in our calculator, we can graph this function. We can graph this function in y1, and we can graph this function right down below it in y2. Or if you're using Wolfram Alpha, you can go and you can say plot. You can type this function in and then you can type this function in, and you can see where they intersect. On the calculator, it's very easy to find the intersection point. You're going to use the calculate option, go to intersection, and then follow the commands to hone in on that point where they intersect. And if you're using Wolfram Alpha, you can uh, enter the, the, the equation here with the command solve, and Wolfram Alpha will solve this equation for you, but it's going to be a little hard for you to um, to take a look at, it's going to give you an exact form and you're going to want to go to the approximate form. So I recommend using a calculator here, but uh, Wolfram Alpha can certainly get you there as well. And if you do so, you will find that the exact value at which the functions intersect uh, is going to be when t is equal to 5.522. Now, this makes sense because when we did our approximation, we ended up with something a little before 5, and thus 5.22 makes perfect sense. So the coffee um, will be 140 degrees Fahrenheit after approximately 5.522 minutes. All right, let's go ahead and write down the key pieces of information that we have uh, learned here in this problem. All right, so if we're given an exponential function, just like any other function, we can solve the equation where we're setting our function equal to some value. In this case, I'm going to call it c. And we can do so graphically. The first way we can do it is we can sketch the graph by hand and approximate the solution. So we can do the same with a table. In other words, we could have made a table of values for our function f of t and tried to see where we would approximately end up at 140. You might have seen that it would be between 5 and 6. So when we are graphing this, I'm going to sketch a general graph here. Here's my exponential function. I'm going to draw an exponential decay function just for fun. And if we want to know where it intersects the value c, we're going to think about where the value c is. You might draw a line through c, the constant function, and you will see where the intersection occurs. Right? What is that x value? Okay, that will be your solution. That will help you get an approximate solution, and we can use a calculator to graph both the function f of x and the constant function c, and find the point of intersection where the two intersect, which will be the solution to the equation f of x equals c. So both of those uh, work. One gives us an approximation, and the other a more precise solution. However, you kind of want to use these together, right? Because you can get an approximation quickly, and your approximation helps you to check that your you didn't make any big errors with your calculator. So you can see, okay, did my calculator answer make sense based on what I've seen from the sketch of my graph? All right, let's go ahead and try a couple of problems out now. So here are the two problems. Uh, you deposit $2,000 in a savings account. It's paying you interest, the annual rate of 4% per year. And uh, if no money is added or withdrawn from the account, and interest is compounded continuously, you want to answer the following questions. How much money will be in the account after 18 years? Justify your answer. And how many years will it take for the account to contain $3,000? Justify your answer. Problem number two, uh, you have some loggerhead sea turtles here, and I'm giving you a couple of data points. So you're actually going to want to create an exponential model for yourself, um, and I would recommend going back and reviewing uh, the key points on how to create uh, an exponential model here, and then go ahead and answer uh, question B using that. All right, good luck with those. Put in some hard effort, and uh, make sure you ask some questions if you have any.